Hello, my 3D printer peeps. Hello, members and Patreons. I'm here with the Sparks i7 Color Combo AI 3D Printer, powered by Creality. We are going to get it out of the box, assembled, set up, and ready for use. Let's get this over with. Depending on when you watch this video, there may be multiple iterations of the i7, including a single color, a dual color mini CFS version, and what's in this box, the four color i7 color combo. When opening a 3D printer, please avoid using knives and box cutters. You never know what's just beneath the surface of this packing. We don't want to scrape, scratch, or damage anything. We are in an age where reduced packaging is the target of most companies. Things are packed really tightly, often right beneath the surface. At the present time, there is nothing packed directly beneath the cover. Flip your box over. The i7 combo is fairly light. You can flip the box over quite easily. I'm going to do that to get my box off. With the box upside down, I'm simply going to lift up. Remove all the cardboard. And get this bag off your printer. With the bag off the printer, lift this piece of phone up and away. Your printer is upside down. We are going to write it. Gently lean it. Remove the remainder of the bag. Find this bag and this piece of cardboard and dispose of the rest. I'm going to stick my hand right here and gently stand it up. You can remove some more foam, keep these boxes. Watch out up top here. We got a few pieces hiding in the foam. With those pieces removed, you can remove the rest of the foam. You may notice my screen is out of place. The mounting mechanism has disengaged. The CFS mounting bracket appears to be a little low and contacting that screen. Keep in mind, this is a pre-release version of the printer and situations like this are typically resolved before the final production model gets to you. Also, the screen was easily put back in place and is fine. Remove the remainder of the foam. Remove the CFS. Remove the foam from the back of the machine. I am going to take my screen. and snap it safely into place. Here under the bed, you'll find two pieces of foam. Remove them both. Here under the front of the bed, you'll find two more pieces of foam. Work those off. Stay a little snug, don't worry, they'll come off. With that foam off, your bed should move freely. You will spot two pieces of tape at the top. Please carefully remove these. Yanking them off might remove the entire plastic bracket. Ask me how I know. If the bracket comes off, it's soft and flexible. Just snap it back on. 
There are two zip ties here and here. Cut them both off using a snipper. You might say you'll use the snipper that came with your printer, but in my toolbox, all I got was an Allen key, an Allen key, and a scraper wrapped in plastic with some tape over it. I'll use my own clipper and snip both of these zip ties off. I cut from the bottom in case I accidentally scratch the printer. It's somewhere you won't see it. Don't scratch your printer. Go ahead and remove the cardboard around the tool head. There's no real trick here. It's just a bunch of folded up origami. Work it all off and the tool head should move smoothly. Remember that piece of cardboard? Inside it is your build plate. Remove it now. This is a dual sided textured PEI bed. Just slip it in and drop it into place. It's exceptionally easy. It's almost impossible to get this wrong. Remove these two plastic locks by removing the four screws. Find the Allen key that fits and take them off. Once they're off, you can remove these two stickers. Let's get our CFS. Remove the plastic. Remove the tape. Take this tab, push it to the right. Open the door and remove the tape inside. Push on each roller to be sure it's still in place after shipping. Did you hear that? You can see it's nice and flush now. This one was popped up a bit. You can see it's nice and flush now. It took a good amount of force to get it back into place. Make sure all of these are fully snapped into place. Close the door, lock it. Grab this cardboard box and open it up. Inside you will see a sample filament, a spare hot end, PTFE tubing, a six pin cable, a power cord, lots more PTFE tubing, and that's it. Please don't use some shriveled up vacuum sealed clipping of filament in a baggie. Use a spool of filament such as Creality Hyper. Open up this bag and take all the PTFE out. You will see it's actually bundled really nice. Let's keep it that way. The bundled side to the printer, the loose side to the CFS. Take this six pin cable out of the bag. Plug one end here and one end here. The plug that goes down to go on the CFS. However, both ends of the six pin cable should be identical. Grab the loose end of the PTFE bundle and plug one of each PTFE tube into each output. They push in straight down just a millimeter or two and they make a satisfying clicking sensation. One of mine did not make the clicking sensation. That's okay. Please do not push your pull. You cannot remove the tube without depressing the black ring first. If you do, you will break the retractable teeth inside this coupler. There's the click and ruin it. Once you insert the tube, leave it alone. The other end goes to this four-way splitter. Do note these couplers are even smaller and more fragile. You may want to remove this little organizer to make your life easier and snap each tube 
into its own coupler. I feel this organizer is overkill and I am going to proceed without it. Just be sure the PTFEs can move with the tool head freely. Your CFS may have come with desiccant packs. If it did, stick one pack in each compartment seen here inside your CFS. And finally, right here, don't miss the camera cover. You will need to slide this out of the way to unobstruct the camera so that you may use time lapse or video monitoring during your prints. Having reached this point, your Sparks i7 is ready to be turned on and set up. We'll do that in the next video. I'm Mr. Greg, and you're on 3D Rundown.